Good morning, you're at 10. Um, what I'm going to do today is go through some of the notes that we are using on the electrolysis practical questions. Um, one of the things we need to remember is I've included in this section in your class notebook as uh, information on the electrolysis. I've also included the double page spreads from the textbook for you to have a look through just in case you need any further research. If you want to have a look on Seneca Learning, it's chapter five, chemical changes, and the last section of that also includes electrolysis for you to have a look through. Um, included here are the two bits that appear quite a lot in the exam questions. So what you've got is there are two types of electrolysis that occurs. Uh, type 1 is where you look at a molten salt and type 2 is where you look at an aqu aqueous salt. You are going to need to be able to identify the two differences in the questions. So one will say molten sodium chloride solution, uh, sodium chloride. So that's molten sodium chloride. If it says sodium chloride solution that is the aqueous version. Now that dramatically affects the results of what you are going to be seeing. So I'm going to start off by talking about the molten salt. This is a salt that has been heated up to a very high temperature and has dissolved, uh, sorry not dissolved, has melted. So in its molten state as you can see here, and I'm going to highlight them for you now, in its molten state, the sodium chloride salt is, is separated into its sodium ions in its liquid form and its chlorine ions in its liquid form. Now, that is important because when it actually talks then about passing electric current through it, the positive ions go towards the negative electrode because opposites attract and the chlorine ion, which is negative, goes towards the positive ion because opposites attract. Now, I've started to make, talk about positive electrodes and negative electrodes there. So I just want to remind you of our acronym for that, where we use the word PANIC. So positive is the anode, negative is the cathode. So positive, anode, negative, cathode. We know that we are talking about the electrodes because they have the suffix, suffix O-D-E. So electrode, anode, and cathode make sure you recognize that suffix because if it's an iron the charges change so because a positive electrode is called an anode the iron ion which is attracted to it is called the anion now because the electrode is positive and the iron is negative you then have to use the an the other acronym here, which is which I use or rhyme, which is positive pussy cations. So cations are positive and are attracted to the cathode, which using the acronym above is negative. Now the sections you need to remember from this is this is what happens at a positive uh, sorry at the negative electrode on the left and what happens at the positive electrode at the right. So at the negative electrode, positive ions are attracted to it. So you've got Na plus liquid. Notice the, the state liquid. We are talking about molten, so it's molten liquid. So Na plus liquid takes an electron off the negatively charged electrode and transfers it to the sodium and turns the sodium back into its an element, which is a sodium element, atom. At the negative electrode, and the reason why we use two here, 
is because chlorine in its native state is Cl2 gas and bromine is Cl2, uh, Br2, iodine is I2, oxygen is O2. Remember, they form small, uh, small, uh, small molecules. So two chlorines go to the positive electrode and discharge that extra two electrons to the electrode because the positive electrode is deficient in electrons so the chlorine gives them to the to the electrode and it then converts back to its element which is Cl2 gas. Now remember we then talked about oil rig which is oxidation is loss reduction is gain. I thought I'd include that so it's just to refresh that all of this is in the textbook in our lecture moments. I'd like you to have a look back at this. The second section I would like you to have a look at is then aqu uh, electrolysis of aqueous solutions. In an aqueous solution you are taking your salt and you are dissolving it in water. Water when you dissolve a salt in it, it becomes a polar solution in other words a solution that has positive and negative charges the water itself splits up and so does the iron itself so what you end up with so say we use our sodium chloride from last time we end up with an na plus iron and a cl minus iron and then the water itself splits up to form H plus and OH minus ions. So we've now got a choice of two positive ions and two negative ions. And that affects the product that is given off at the electrodes. At the negative electrode, what happens is the least reactive positive ion is produced at that electrode. So if we are talking about sodium and hydrogen ions, because they are the, both the positive ions, sodium, as we know from the reactivity series, is a highly reactive metal. Hydrogen, we generally fit in just above copper on the reactivity series. So that's a very low reactive positive ion. So in this case, the least reactive ion would be the hydrogen. So you get hydrogen being given off at that electrode. Now, I've mentioned reactivity series. You're going to need to go back into your textbooks and find that, but if you remember it started off potassium, sodium, uh, lithium, then it goes calcium, magnesium, aluminium, iron, tin, copper. But we, we can fit other elements in there, like we might be able to put aluminium between magnesium and iron there are various versions of that you are just gonna have to choose one that you can remember and an acronym to uh, create an acronym to remember remind it but the key point here is it goes iron tin copper but we can fit hydrogen in between tin and copper so it's only elements that are below copper on the reactivity series which is copper silver gold and platinum would be given off at an electrode if it's in an aqueous solution. Apologise for that. At the positive electrode it flips because remember metals and non-metals tend to work in opposite directions so in this case it flips at the positive electrode the most reactive non-metal is given off. Now the non-reactive elements we've looked at so far have been called the halides and they are in group 7. Now the most reactive of the halides was fluorine, then it was chlorine, then it was bromine, then it was iodine. So any solution containing fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine would be given off at the positive electrode. After that, we then move across a column into group 6, where the very top element on group 6 is oxygen. Now, this sort of becomes the, uh, becomes the cutoff point because the hydroxide ion that is formed when water splits up contains oxygen. So, oxygen is there 
straight after fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So we've got fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, oxygen. So if there's anything that's less reactive than oxygen, oxygen will be given off at preference. Now you are going to need to know the equations, which I am highlighting now. Apologize. In the book, which is the section that is here. Ooh, I can't highlight at the moment, so I do apologize. Which is the section that I'm highlighting here. Now, these look quite complicated, but they're they are not as bad as they look. What you've got is four hydroxide ions. Yes, it takes four of them. Combine with four electrons from the negative, sorry, from the positive, uh, lose four electrons to the positively charged electrode and convert back to make oxygen O2 plus water. So remember at the beginning we said that hydrogen, uh, water splits up into H plus and OH minus ions. So if you've got four OH minus ions getting to an ele the positive electrode, they can drop off their electrons at the electrode, or transfer them, should use the correct terminology, transfer the electrons to the positively charged electrode. They will then convert back into two lots of oxygen, and, uh, and two, sorry, one lot of oxygen and two lots of water. Now that's the bit that you need to remember on this. So, positive electrode, most reactive element, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and then oxygen would be given off. Negative electrode, it's the least reactive element that is formed, which in most cases would be hydrogen from the water, unless it contains copper, silver, gold or platinum which are the four elements that are less reactive than hydrogen okay in the diagram then you've got the reactivity uh, react the required practical and this is where i am basing a lot of these questions about in the in the past paper section because it will be applying the knowledge i've just gone through to new situations now the situation that we did in required practical was copper sulfate which is a blue colored solution. We've got graphite electrodes because they are deemed to be inert electrodes. And we've got the copper sulfate solution. So I'm using the word solution. So we straight away are looking at copper and sulfate, hydrogen and hydroxide ions. Now in this case, because we know that copper is less reactive than hydrogen, copper will be given off at the negative electrode so the so the copper is positively charged the negative electron electrode because it's got lots of uh, negative charges on it transfers an electron to the copper turn it back into copper metal so that coats the outside of the electrode so the so the negative electrode will go an orangey brown color, which is a coating of pure copper. At the other electrode, you will see bubbles start to appear, and those bubbles of gas will be oxygen, because if we go through a series, we go, is it a halide? No, nope, sulfate is not a halide. It's not fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So we are now sulfate or oxide, hydroxide. We know that oxygen is more reactive, so oxygen will be given off at the positive electrode. Okay, so I'm going now going to introduce to you the next section on this. So if you go back into your electrolysis section, you can then go into the electrolysis past paper questions. And there is a worked example as a sub page of this one. If I click on this now, you can see that I've included this. Now, I've included the past paper question here. What I'm going to do is very quickly go through this. I have tried to, as much as possible, explain my thinking down the right-hand side of the page. So I'm not going to read through this, but I'm going to speed through it using my own verbal explanation for this. So, reading the question. When different salt solutions are electrolyzed in an inert electrode, the product of the negative electrode is always a metal. 
Here it says describe how you carry out the test of the hypothesis. You need to draw a diagram, give an, uh, the independent variable and describe what would be formed at what you'd see at the negative electrode, if it's true. Now, scrolling down, I look at this and go, right, it's worth five marks. Okay, so because it's worth five marks, I need to think of where those five marks are. Now, I'm looking at this and going straight away, I'm guessing the independent variable and the observation are worth a mark each. So that means three marks must be to do with the diagram. So if I'm trying to draw the diagram, I have to think back to my GCSE where we did the required practical, what equipment was it? Well, I had a beaker, I had the salt solution, I had inert electrodes or graphite electrodes, graphite electrodes would work perfect for this, and I need a power supply, so I've included them. So I've actually written down then what the mark scheme says in there, which says you need to have a complete circuit with the power supply, you need the salt solution in the beaker, and you need electrodes, must be included. There we go, dead simple, dead straightforward. If I wanted to, I could take my little diagram here and I could add in that this side is the positive side of the electrode. Oops. And this one is a negative side. If you remember when we're talking about batteries, the longer, uh, the one with the longer bar is the positive side, the smaller bar is the negative side, so plus minus. What right, independent variable? I am going to have to really struggle to remember this because I'm at least one of the questions that come in. No, I'm not. I'm not going to need to struggle. Remember, we've used dick and mass. Yes, I know we all had to giggle at that, but dick and mass. D I C M A S. Dependent, independent, controlled variable. Measure, alter, same. So independent is the thing that I am altering. So what from that statement, and this is a really, really simple one mark question, because it says in the question, when, when different salt solutions are being electrolyzed with an inert electrode, the product at the negative electrode is always a metal. Right, so it's telling me they are changing, they are altering, the different salt solutions. So the independent variable is the salt, is by changing the salt solutions. What are you going to observe? Based on our practical where we did copper sulfate, I would expect to see a coating of a metal on the negative electrode. So that is if the hypothesis is correct, I would see metal coating the negative electrode. Five marks. All of this then is explained here. The way that I've done it on the side, and you are going to have to have a bit of a read through this, is I've approached that in a slightly new way, where I took apart the question in the detect section. I've then included recall notes, which is little bits of notes that explain everything that I need to include. The solve section is the bit that I'm verbally doing now and explaining what the question is. And then the, I'm going to give you some other questions to have a go. So part B, okay, the student's hypothesis is only partially correct. Explain why the product of the negative electrode is not always a metal. Right, this is where we use our subject knowledge. We know that in a solution, there are two ions that are formed. One, pot, one is hydrogen and one is the metal ion. Now the least reactive of the two travels to the uh, positive, sorry, negative electrode. So I have to explain that into my answer. So in this case, is it will only be a metal formed at the negative electrode if it is less reactive than hydrogen. So it's copper, silver, gold, platinum. I'm keeping. So repetitive, completely repeating it. So copper, silver, gold, platinum, all less reactive than hydrogen. Anything that's more reactive than hydrogen will not be formed hydrogen gas well. Okay, moving on. Part C, another two marks. This is going back and going back to that. For the end of the lesson, you are looking here at these two. So predict what will be given off at the positive electrode. So at the 
positive electrode. So that will be the negatively charged ions because opposites attract. And the negatively charged ions here would be chloride and hydroxide in the sodium chloride. So when we are talking about that, oh, it's a halogen. So in this case, we've got a chloride and a hydroxide. So which one is the more reactive of the two? Because it's the positive electrode, so that's the most reactive. Chloride or hydroxide. In this case, it will be the chloride. So when it reacts, it will convert back to its element. Remember, change of suffix from chloride back to chlorine. Because chlorine is the element and chloride, ide, tells us it's a salt. Ide or eight tells us it's an iron or a salt. So chlorine, the element, is given off at the, at the negative, sorry, positive electrode. With copper sulfate, we've got sulfate ions, negative ion, hydroxide ions, negative ion. Which one is it to? Is it a chlor is it a halogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine? No, it's not. So therefore it's going to be oxygen that's given off. So I've reasoned through my logic, I've reasoned through my thinking, and I've explained it as clearly as I can, repeating as many times the bits of knowledge that you need to understand. So all of this is here, it says I've seen you know when electrolysis occurs in the liquid, the less reactive element either hydrogen or, so it's, I've included in the notes, I'm going to reformat that slightly there to make it flow better. That now works for you to have a look at. So once you've done that, I've set the task for this piece of homework is to have a go at the past paper questions here. Now there are 45 marks in total over all of the pages. So we are saying 45 minutes plus watching this video plus reading through the notes plus having a look at all the other bits and bobs. So I've set this as a two hour homework for you. I'm hoping this is uh, going to be okay for you. Please make sure and ask any questions should you have any problems.